In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this Kill Team game board. For the main material, I used cardboard up to 5mm thick. Later on, I also used some plastic packaging, plastic straws and what I had laying around, but no woodworking is needed. For the most part, you could probably use foam board and foam core too, but I had a lot of cardboard laying around, so I used it. After looking at some reference pictures, I came up with this sketch. I wanted to have a canal and some buildings around it. I also wanted to have the buildings on multiple heights. So I started by layering two 5mm thick cardboard pieces together. Both pieces have a length of 78cm or 31 inch and a width of 57cm or 22.5 inches. I didn't look at the exact measurements but for the biggest piece I could get out of a giant cardboard box. I also cut them out in a way that the directions of the corrugation are in a 90 degree offset, so my base is nice and sturdy. Then I started to assemble some ruined buildings, some with bridges between them. I marked out the places on the board where I wanted the buildings, then transferred the measurements to another piece of cardboard. In every building I made markings at about 7 cm height. I always oriented the top of the next floor at this mark, so that I had an approximate 6.5 cm between every floor and ceiling of a level. The bottom edge of the windows is always at a height of about 2 cm. The height of the window openings vary from 2 to 3 cm, that's about an inch, but I suggest you try to make them a lot more different from each other. Kind of like Trent from the YouTube channel Miscast did it in one of his videos. You can find the link in the description. For the door openings I went with a height of about 5 to 6 cm, which translates to 2 inches. My doorways are always a bit higher than the windows next to them because I thought it looked better than them being the same height. I wanted my game board to have an industrial touch, so I started making some mini silos from some chewing gum packaging. I made some legs with kebab sticks and I added some straws as piping because it looked right to me. I found some other packaging parts in my terrain build boxes, so I began assembling this thing which I thought could be a tiny reactor or something else radioactive. I used hot glue to glue the parts together but I later went over it again with some all-purpose adhesive because I didn't find any superglue at my local stores. But you should probably use superglue or something similar because hot glue will not glue these plastic pieces together properly. I needed some more tanks on there, so I assembled some from old candy packaging, again with hot glue. I made two of these so I could put one on each side of the game board. I just went on searching through my terrain bits box and got inspired by these two things. So I assembled it and it later turned out to be a power box or an energy generator of some kind. Now I'm just going for some detailing and eye catches. The more and the tinier the details are, the more the whole thing will look good and in scale with your miniatures. 
In the Kill Team rulebook, I read about the Kill Zone sector Imperialis and immediately thought I need those hatch doors, so I built some from some lids and other trash I had laying around. I then put all the tiny terrain pieces on my game board and glued them down where I felt it was too empty. I also glued on some sewer entrances, but I would suggest doing that after texturing and priming the board, because concrete looks different than metal pipe and it wasn't funny to paint around these pipes and mask them off and stuff. I then glued some paper strips to the open sides of the corrugated cardboard, so that later on it looked like smooth surfaces. I also glued some thin cardboard to the buildings, the one you can find at the back of a college block. And I glued on some plastic straws as piping. I did add mosquito net to some walls because it gives a nice texture. And because I don't know where to get cross stitching mesh. I mostly used wood glue and all purpose adhesive in this step. I wanted some of the ground levels to look like concrete, so I thought to myself what material could look like concrete or cement on a 28mm scale. So I went with modeling plaster, or plaster of Paris, or whatever you call it, the stuff you get in a local hardware store. So I put plaster on all the base plate walls and on some floors, and it did not turn out how I wanted it at all. I wanted it to be a smooth finish like all the real-life concrete and cement floors and walls always look like. But only the canal was smooth. Also, the plaster leaked out everywhere and it also caused warping a lot. All in all, I wouldn't do it like this again. I would suggest you to jump over this step and just paint it like model builders paint cement or concrete. Another option would be to pour single plaster plates that you then glue to your board. It would be a big effort to do that, but nothing would warp. You would have characteristic seam lines of concrete floor plates and all in all it would probably look better. But again, the way I did it I got some interesting textures on the walls, which I'm quite proud of. One of the buildings looked too naked on the inside, so I took some thin cardboard and cut it into 1x1 cm plates, which I used as floor tiles. I glued them into the building using watered down wood glue and some kebab sticks to place them correctly. I've placed some of them as if they've become loose or damaged. Here you can see some of the details so far. I also added a big pipe above the canal because it looked too naked. I mean, as an imperial city planner you gotta use every empty space you could get your hands on. It also has a gangway on top of it for snipers to stand on. I then placed down some improvised sculptor mold in places where I thought rubble and ruined parts would pile up. By the way, this is basically plaster with paper mache and wood glue. The rubble piles were detailed by gluing down broken up plaster plates as wall remains like Luke from Luke's APS Geek Gaming Scenic did it in one of his videos, link in the description. Then I glued on large followed by medium and on top fine grit sand. I also added some 40k bits here and there. To seal things off I used watered down wood glue, one part glue and one part water. I then proceeded by adding hot glue puddles to some of the pipes sticking out of the walls. Just make sure that your hot glue is really hot. In my case I just powered on my hot glue gun and waited till the hot glue started dripping out and making bubbles because of its heat. I mixed up some black and white paint added a bit of sand and wood glue to it. With this texture paint I base coated the whole game board, which was stupid. Instead of painting everything like this, I should have painted all things that were supposed to be metal or concrete with a paint that hadn't had sand in it. Because what I basically did by priming everything with this texture was destroying the concrete texture I already had achieved and destroying the metal texture I was going to paint. Well, lesson learned. Think before your paint, not afterwards. I also had to fix some hot glue seams that had popped open because of the plaster and wood glue warping. Then I decided to use watered down wood glue to glue paper to the rim of my game board so that no seam would ever pop open again. Later on I even wrapped it around to the bottom so everything gets hardened by the wood glue. I gave all the tiny silos, tanks, pipes and hatch doors some different colors. For the silos and tanks I went with a red and later on with a darker red. The pipes and silos got kind of a dirty eggshell color, which was grey 
yellow and baby blue mixed up in a weird way. I just experimented with the colors till I got something that I liked and looked like an old industrial color. The hatch doors and some other pipes got a turquoise-ish color. To create rust, I put down a bit of orange, black and a lot of brown acrylic paints on my palette and then dabbed it on my terrain with a tiny piece of a sponge. Just everywhere where it looked right. I also dabbed more rust paint on the underside of the pipe because water would collect there after a thunderstorm or whatever. Here you can see how I wrapped paper down to the underside of my game board. I dry brushed all the walls with a light grey, or maybe also with a medium grey first, I don't really remember. I then dabbed on and dry brushed all the metal parts with an old citadel silver color I had lying around, nothing special. I then glued on some warning signs to the silos, tanks and the reactor and the generator. And I put some imperial propaganda posters on the walls of the buildings. Just search for imperial propaganda poster on Google and you will find great options. After that I made myself a wash and brushed it on everything. As you might see, it is way too dark, so you should not go with 2 parts of acrylic paint and 10 parts of water and what. Mix something else, because my game board was basically black after that. So I had to re-establish my paint job from before, which meant dry brushing again. I also dabbed on some new colors to the metal parts, so now it looks like there are many layers of paint. All in all, I'm quite happy how this turned out, because I got a lot of contrast out of that one mistake. After my second dry brushing, the next step was to add on fresh rust. For that, I made the paint mixture as before, but with more orange, as you could see here. Again, I dabbed it on with a tiny piece of a sponge. I also went in and painted on rust streaks with a tiny brush, imitating how water would flow down the scenery. I then painted the hot glue puddles green with a glowing effect, kind of like Guy from Midwinter Mini did it on his Necrons, link again in the description below. Basically I painted the puddles in a dark and a light green, dry brushing everything around it to get a glowing effect. I could have used my airbrush but I was too lazy to do so, but it turned out nicely. In the end I painted the game board rim black. To protect the board from taking damage, especially to the corners, I made some damage absorbers out of EVA foam I had laying around. Just sharpen your knife before every cut and you're good to go. Before gluing the pieces on with hot glue, I heat sealed them. And now the finished product. That's it. I hope you learned something through the build. I sure did. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep on building and goodbye. <laughs>